So, I mean, he's screwed. Um, there's really no way for him to win now. He's technologically behind. He's against someone with a bigger uh, empire with more production. I sort of don't like you anymore. After you took liberalism from me, you really upset me, and I'm not going to play uh, friendly with you anymore. And Samusa is now my best friend. You got kind of, uh, I think screwed there as far as luck, but whatever. Again, uh, it's been real, but there's no way you can bounce back now. Again, we'll take all the high production cities. Build another trebuchet, because we still don't have enough, even after all those we built before. And... We'll attack Baghdad. A lot of times you want to go for um, the high production cities, which would be his capital and Damascus, but we intend to wipe them out, and we don't want to... Um, I don't really want to come back over here with my army. Double back, you know. So instead we're going to go for his right-hand cities first. His outer cities. Uh, you know, you'll like me even if I say no, so. We're getting to the point where I don't, again, I just don't want to give people technology, because they've actually managed to keep up with me. A little bit annoying, but whatever. There's really no point in waiting much longer. We'll give it one more turn. He can attack my trebuchets on the way in, because I'm not paying attention. And he can do that all he wants. But it's not going to save him. The only thing I don't want to happen is I don't want to leave this city and then lose it again. So actually, sending a longbowman will pretty much prevent that from happening. So one more turn, and then we'll attack. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He actually killed my longbowman. Uh, um, he still has this big offensive force here that he's coming to attack me with. Maybe I will just wait for a little bit. has been said that democracy is the worst form of government. Good economics. All the others that have been tried. We didn't get, um... We didn't get the Great Lighthouse this game. So, Corporation is pretty good for me. Build the Statue of Liberty in Rome. Maybe we will go for Mecca after all. I think we will. I think he's producing too many units there. And if we don't go for... I didn't actually realize that this was all right here. Well, it's just too long, Bowman, mostly. Yeah. He didn't take the city. But he did give it a go. That's the end of him. He may not know that he's dead, but he is. 
We may still kick a while. But we won. We would have been content to not do this. The only person we really wanted to attack is Ragnar, and we were gonna wait until rifling. Speaking of... No. Probably not. Do we have, uh... Ragnar right now is not a military threat, probably. It's kind of surprising that he never did anything. This, this revolt mechanic kind of sucks too. We just took the city, we built walls in it, and the city immediately revolts and doesn't have walls, and all my units are on half health there. It doesn't matter in this, uh, this situation, but in another situation, that could have been extremely frustrating. And I don't think it's hard to imagine how all of your units suddenly being on half health uh, might be frustrating. So there goes Mecca. The only thing about this is that we don't really have the money to keep it up forever. We have the money to keep it up for a long time. Mansa Musa. He doesn't have democracy. Does Mansa Musa have democracy? He needs printing press. He doesn't have printing press. Okay. I wasn't 100% sure. I've left this city just building things because its production just isn't that great. I don't know. It's probably not a good reason. But that didn't stop me from doing it anyways. He's still annoying. But that's all he can be anymore, is annoying. There's no way for me to lose from here. And so it's just a long march down to the end. Yes, yes, yes. Saladin's AI is pretty good. It's not unusual to see him win games. And so we're pretty happy to be crushing him right now. He's no joke. But he was just technologically behind us because we were able to trade. And he's just totally failed to make something out of this war. He attacked us because he knew we were weak, but we had the production and we had the foresight previously to build some defenses. Not a lot, but enough so that we held him off. And now he's in a loser's position. All he can do is slow me down enough so that I can't beat Darius in a tech race. And he's not gonna do that, I don't think. I really hope not. <laughs> Darius jumping in on this war would be a problem. But Darius isn't a warmonger. And his best cities are over by me. Which means he'd be putting them in a lot of danger doing that. 
I don't know if the AI factors something like that in. Corporation. I'm sure it depends. An ingenious device for obtaining individual profits but if I was the AI, I'd be really worried about doing something like that. It's kind of funny that we had no re resources this game. Anyways, that's why I'm not building harpers anywhere. They don't provide any health benefits because we don't have any sea resources. He's still killing units. He's still annoying as hell. He's a lot like Catherine in that sense. He can be behind, and he's still not uh, very fun to fight against or deal with. Because his AI is just kind of brutal. It's not like Mansa Musa. Mansa Musa can be ahead of you technologically and have a lot of production, and he just won't build enough units to be dangerous. His AI is really not scary, and if I wanted to, I could go wipe him out right now. Friends, this game, and I may as well hold to that. Because I don't see why not. I have other fish to fry, don't I? So, Damascus is his last good city. He probably has something down here that we can't see. We actually did know he had that. We got the event for it earlier, way earlier in the game. Uh, but I had just sort of forgotten about it. You can get more of what you want with a kind word and a gun than you can with just a kind word. Did somebody build Versailles? No. Again. We're not really doing anything specific with that city. Illinois is not a bad city, I guess. I don't know. He's crippled. He probably still has a ton of units. The AI gets a bunch of units for free in that sense that um, I, s I believe they still build them, but they don't pay for them in the same way that uh, people do to prevent them f uh, because they can't, they have to have like certain amount of garrisons in their city. And if they paid for them in the same way the humans do, they'd be bankrupt pretty quick. Um, to me, that seems like kind of nonsense, but it is the way it is done in this game. So the AI cheat, even on Noble. You really, the only thing about the AIs on Noble is that they don't have big production bonuses. They don't have big, um, we need one more bank somewhere. They don't have big culture bonuses. They don't have any of that stuff. But they still cheat. They just cheat in pretty creative ways. They cheat with uh, information too, but the human cheats too. The human can see borders that it shouldn't be able to see because of the way the graphics of this game work. And the human can know things because of cho choose religion. The humans can know things too just because of which wonders get built. The AI cheats with information too, but not quite in the same way. Humans are a lot more dangerous, but the AI definitely has its fair share of funny things it can do. Little tricks up its sleeve. 
I played video games for a long time. Um, pretty much as long as I've been alive. And I've never met an AI that played fair in any strategy game. And if it did play fair, it wouldn't play very well. AI cheat. And it's just about how they cheat. Continuing to whip walls everywhere so that we have good defenses in these cities. Because even though I don't think that he can muster a proper counterattack anymore, I think that he could off. He could easily take back one of my cities for a turn or two, and that would be annoying. Okay. He's got all these huge bonuses. We have so much artillery, it doesn't matter. I really like artillery in this game. You can really just destroy the AI uh, death stacks. I don't think there's really any other way to do it, actually. Political power grows out of the barrel of a gun. So we have rifles. We're in a new era now. Um, rifles are good. We're also going to get the Statue of Liberty this turn. Rifles are good. Very good. Uh, probably one turn for a maceman is worth it, though. Barely, though. Rifles are a lot better uh, than anything else. We can also switch into nationhood and start drafting. So that's one of the classic ways to conquer the uh, world, especially on lower difficulties. If you're new to civilization, here's a fun trick for you. Play on, like, Settler or Chieftain. Um, it's not hard. <laughs> that's not the trick. Uh, the trick is to... Just don't do any wars until you get to rifling, and then sort of steamroll the world. Because you'll get to rifling first, because you just have such huge bonuses to research compared to the AI. And your rifles are so much better than the AI. And you can produce them for free, essentially, with, uh, with drafting, with nationhood. Um, you don't know what I'm talking about. It's this civic we got here, which we got at nationalism, which was here, and then we got rifling here. And you can draft rifles. And it's a really cheap and easy way of getting a world conquest on lower difficulties. You can do it on higher difficulties too, and conquer an AI who's technologically behind. If we can, we'll do it to Ragnar. For sure. He's caught up, though. He's been trading with Darius. Darius is a real has been a real thorn in our side this game. He's really screwed, uh, I said, every opportunity that he could without actually fighting us. I don't blame him. He's trying to win the game. But I do hate him for it. Spending a lot of money taking over this uh, this territory now, and a lot of the rest of this territory isn't even that good. But at this point, we're just doing it to spite Saladin. If we stop now, I think we'll regret it. We're gonna leave him in these two cities. I don't see the point of even attacking them. 
the production isn't there for it to even be worth while to me. And then I guess we'll turn around and go attack, um... Attack Ragnar with our rifles. It's such a dumb idea that it's definitely what we're gonna do. Chemistry means a difference between poverty and starvation and the abundance We don't get our upgraded um cannons until siege. And we'd like astronomy for observatories everywhere. Right now, if Darius has observatories everywhere. He's basically teching 25% faster than us. You can see why that might be a problem. But we've just had other things we've wanted. But again, we're okay with this city being garbage. We mostly took it just to prevent him from doing any sort of culture nonsense over here. We're sort of doing the same thing with Illinois. It doesn't matter if it's bad. Because that's not the point. We can do free religion now. We did get the spiral minaret. We didn't get the university. I think we're okay with our civics right now. I just like organized religion. And we could be getting plus 10% science right now, but we're not having an unhappiness problem for the most part. Yeah, we'll just get rid of that. <laughs> One doesn't discover new and, um, without losing sight of the truth. I don't know. I think what we're doing makes sense. <laughs> So again, we're just going to turn right back around, head north. I think this is enough to hold it. You know what? Let's not take any chances. Upgrade a unit there. Uh, it's, it's really unlikely that he'll be able to counterattack me. So... I don't expect anybody's gonna watch this. <laughs> Especially this much of it. It's a bit slow. Um, and I don't think it's particularly interesting to watch. But I used to, um... I had this guy on YouTube. He might be attacking me right now. I, I used to watch this guy. He d hasn't done YouTube videos in like six or four or five years, but he used to do Let's Plays of Civilization 4. And they weren't very interesting. And they weren't particularly good. He was good at the game. And he would talk a lot about the game. But I don't think I really absor absorbed any of it. But I watched like... Probably hundreds of hours of this guy's content, even though, um, for the most part, it was boring. And I think part of the reason I did that was we're gonna make peace now, and we'll just take whatever you're willing to give us. Yeah, sure, why not? Part of the reason I did this was because. I don't know, not all content, not everything you watch has to be super high octane. Sometimes you can just listen to someone monotonely talk about civilization. And that's okay. And I guess that's the, the sort of thing that I'm going for here. 
If anyone likes it, that's okay. But I was going to be playing Civilization anyways. So if they don't like it, then I'm just having a good time playing Civilization. It's also making me play better, because I get to talk through my moves. I'm making better decisions, I think. I'm playing this version of the game. This is the base game. We're just playing on a regular map, but I really like some of the mods for Civilization. Uh, not the mods, but, well, I guess they are mods. Um, I really like RFC in particular, and so this is sort of a proof of concept, but I'm probably going to do RFC next, because I really like it. I'm probably going to play as Portugal, because they're my favorite. Um, RFC can be pretty hard, though. There's some of the civilizations that I still don't know how you're even supposed to approach your play is. Some of them are easy. Portugal is definitely easy. But some of them are, um... Some of them are like three times as hard as Portugal. And some of them are pretty just luck dependent. And that kind of sucks. The Greeks, I remember having a bit of a hard time with. Um, and apparently everyone knows the Ethiopians are bad and not fun to play. But there's others, like uh, Mongolia, that I've never been able to complete, so maybe I'll try and do that. It would be cool to have a recorded process of me continually failing at at a civilization, at, at one civil, pr particular civilization, and then finally succeeding. I think that would be kind of, kind of fun just to have for me. I think we do have the Statue of Zeus. I don't remember what any of this stuff gives us. So, I think I just accidentally whipped in every city. I didn't even really realize you could do that. That's funny. I believe by double clicking, I uh, I did that. So I think Antium is still. So we went to Wall Street there. We got a great engineer. At this point in the game, great engineers are not one free wonder. They're like half of one wonder. But half of one wonder is still pretty good. probably don't have enough workers now. The Golden Age is pretty good. We're happy with that. That was definitely worth accidentally whipping everywhere. <laughs> I want to play other games too. Just things that I played as a kid and I'd like to record. Civilization I'm not very good at. In fact, I'm not really good at any games. <laughs> Sad but true. But there are some games that I'm extraordinarily familiar with. I would say I'm pretty familiar with this game. I think Theocracy would be pretty good for me right now. One of the first games... Well, give me a second here. I'm only building units, but I got all the cities down south that actually I'd like to get in Judaism too. We're gonna attack Ragnar in like two turns. One of the first games I ever played when I was uh, growing up was 
a game called, it's pretty famous, I think, I think a lot of people know about this game, a game called Dawn of War. I played, in particular, Dark Crusade first, because it's not like it was the first game I ever played, or I grew up with it, because I really didn't. I didn't play it until I was like 10 or 12, and I had played plenty of games before then. But I was just getting to the age where people started to use the word gamer, or I became familiar with that term. And I was just starting to, I guess that was the game that really made me start associating with that term. Because even though I wasn't very good at it, and I knew I wasn't very good at it, I had just a lot of fun with it. And I sort of became a nerd during that time. It's sort of the game that turned me into a nerd. And so it's pretty near and dear to my heart. It's kind of funny, too, because I, I didn't like any of the future ones. I didn't like Soulstorm, and I didn't like um, Dawn of War 2 or... Th I, I never played 3. I thought Dawn of War 2 was just had a lot of issues, and Soulstorm was just a direct downgrade. So, I want to play that. And when I play that, I'm going to have a different energy, I think. This is pretty relaxed. I'm specifically trying to keep things calm and slow and not freak out about things or be mad. But when I play that, maybe I'll be a bit more upbeat. And that might be pretty fun. So we're going to attack Ragnar. He's not anywhere close to rifling. Is he? He has gunpowder. Does he need printing press? He doesn't have education, for God's sake. Ragnar, what are you doing? He needs printing press. He's two techs away, at minimum, from getting rifling, even if he beeline for it. Is Darius going to attack us in these couple of turns? And if he did, could he defeat us? Well, he doesn't have rifling. So the short answer to this one is no. So I'm thinking of playing Dawn of War. Uploading that. I just want to play games. I think it's pretty unlikely in this day and age that you go anywhere with a YouTube channel. And so, I don't want to think of it that way. I want to play games that I want to play. I want to play games that I would be playing anyways. And I'll just record it and talk over it, because I don't know. I'm a lonely internet weirdo. Um, <laughs> uh, but you know, I think I think that's a good idea. So I'll play some Dawn of War, and I'll put that on my channel. And I'll keep doing Civilization. There's another, um, I know I'm talking about things that aren't this right now, but there's not much to talk about this. There's no strategy that goes into, um, <laughs> that goes into rifling someone to death. It's just, I have more technology, so you are dead. Should've played better, nerd. Um, didn't go into nationhood. I sort of thought we had. The fact that we can't draft is, uh, 
at least slightly concerning. Even if he takes this city back, we can just also get it back. So, go for it, friend. I want to play, um, there's one of my favorite mod mods of all time, which is, I think, what people used to call, no, they used to call it mods for Civ 4, but it's a mod mod in the sense that RFC is a thing. That stands for Rise and Fall of Civilization. I guess probably most people wouldn't know that. My bad. Uh, but there's a version of it which is specifically for Europe. And this person, in my opinion, really outshone the original RFC with what they did. And he was still updating it up until like two or three years ago, which is really impressive. He really stuck with it. And he produced, in my opinion, one of the most fun um, experiences you can have with a video game. Just a truly spectacular mod. Well, now we wish we had gone into nationhood because we could be drafting right now. Let's take a look at the damage. We actually thought Darius declared war on us for a second there, but that is not what happened. And we're very happy to say that that is not what happened. Yeah? You gonna attack us with, with this? That's your plan? I mean, I can't... I can't stop you. I'm not worried about that. So I want to play RFC Europe. Again, that stands for Rise and Fall Europe. Uh, of Europe. What it is, is it's a... Um, rise and Fall, the way that that this guy did it is he gave civilizations it's like a real world map so it's an earth map he gave the civilizations different points when they spawn and when they go away and he made it so that um, all of them have different objectives and if they overextend or bad things happen to them too much, they just collapse. And so, civilizations come and go. I have no time for such nonsense. Uh, but you gotta get what you gotta get done. It prevents a lot of snowballing, which is pretty good. It's one of the big problems with civilization, is once someone gets ahead, it's really hard for them to lose. Uh, but not so with RFC. There's no such thing as getting ahead, really. You can put your civilization in a strong spot, but they could just be gone in the next three turns. That's kind of cool, I guess. I I played it a lot as a kid. Uh, it comes RFC, the original version, comes based with, uh, I think, Beyond the Sword. Maybe Warlords as well. Anyways, it's a lot of fun. And so I'll play that. I don't know when. Again, I'm just going to play whatever game um, I want to play. And I'm going to record it. That's how I'm going to do things. Um, if I do make a million dollars off monotonely, um, t talking about civilization, then I guess I can change my tune and play some other things.
that maybe I wouldn't otherwise play. But, like, come on. <laughs> Who are we trying to fool here? <laughs> um. There's no, no point of uh, thinking about things like that. Again, this, like, um, I actually maybe should have swapped animation hood there, because I wasn't a golden age. Oops. Vassal is still pretty good for us. We don't need the units. We only need the units if Darius attacks us. And he hasn't opted to yet. I'll just give that one more turn. There's, there's just no thought that goes into this kind of war. We have a technology lead, so he's gonna get crushed. He doesn't have the production power because we've outproduced him, because we settled so much in the early game. Um, we suffered early so that we have a big advantage now. And boy, do we have an advantage. We're just gonna wipe him out. All of these cities are good down here, and I want them all, so I'm just going to destroy him. Unlike uh, Saladin, who we could have left two or three cities around because we just didn't care, um, because they were of poor quality. We basically won everything Ragnar got. That said, maybe Saladin had the worst starting position. Because I came... So the first thing I did was I came and I settled down here. I settled here first. I really screwed Mantha over a little bit. I could have gotten screwed here. Big time. I came and settled here pretty quick, though. He didn't have much of an opportunity to stop me from doing that. 